Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Guru, Guru Raj Habu. Uh, Baskaran couldn't make it, so I'm here. Uh, I'm the client partner for Jeffries from HCL Tech. I have Anil Sharma with me, uh, who is the senior vice president at Jeffries and who's looking after all the corporate uh, function innovations and especially the Gen AI uh, initiatives at Jeffries. So today we are going to talk about how we have adopted Gen AI within Jeffries to transform their corporate functions. Uh, before we get there, I just want to quickly get some background on how the whole journey started and then get, in, get into the initiatives that we are currently doing. So the whole uh, ideation, if you were to call it, started in last year's reInvent at this very place where, where the leadership teams of Jeffries, HCL Tech, and AWS met. And they, they brainstormed on, on the idea of, you know, having how do I go about defining a data strategy and have use cases aligned to support with my Gen AI initiatives. So this was back in December 2023. After that, we, we, we had a very collaborative partnership with uh, AWS and their uh, team and Jeffrey's IT and business teams. We started off with, with a small pilot use case for on MLOps. And in parallel, also we, we followed the whole D2E workshop, the data-driven everything workshop that, that, that uh, was you know, driven by AWS. So during that workshop, it, it was really a collaborative effort where all the three teams came in together and we kind of brainstormed and we whiteboarded at least 15 to 20 use cases. And during the course of, course of those two months, we finally narrow, narrowed down on two use cases that we thought are the most relevant and are, would be the most hard-hitting uh, problems that we could solve. The first use case that we finalized was, was on the auto email classification and email response generation. This was very close to their, uh, to Jeffrey's finance ops teams, where they get lots of emails and you know, that had to be classified and they needed an automated AI-based solution for that. And after that, once we identified, the second use case was based on the anomaly detection related to the, all the trades that come in. Considering it's an investment bank, the volume of trades is significant. After that, we went deep dive into the solutions uh, sessions uh, in Q2 of uh, this year, and we kind of elaborated on those two use cases. I would let Anil uh, elaborate on that and deep dive into the productionizing of those initiatives. Thanks, Guru. Uh, good afternoon. So, first of all, I want to highlight you know the partnership, the three-way partnership we've had with AWS and HCL Tech and Jeffries coming together and actually charting out a whole Gen AI journey for um, our corporate functions and beyond. So, this is just one of a sliver of a journey that we did with HCL, but we, we've uh, broader initiatives going on here uh, as well. So what we um, started doing was, with the business, as Guru mentioned, we had these um, very deep dive sessions in AWS methodology of D2E, data-driven everything. We start at the bottom, what's the problem? What are the use cases? What are the benefits? And quantified each of those, and out of the many use cases, we narrowed down on things that had the highest ROI for us uh, in, in the generative AI. And we also had to weigh in complexity versus uh, ROI as well. You don't want to jump into the most complex use case. And the whole idea was we're going to build it in iterations and keep developing on that and generate that as a framework. So through the journey where we are right now, we are into December. And um, I'll talk about those two use cases. But I want to give you a little bit of uh, overarching overview of what we are doing at Jefferies holistically and what are the different types of uh, business functions, what are the different technologies that we are leveraging, um, what are the user segments, and this is where you see, but the, for the general population, like you know, everybody uh, wants to use a GPT-like uh, search engine. So we have invested in that particular function as well. And then on the user segments, the business segment, this is where we've been focusing a lot more uh, in terms of actually doing custom development, is a lot of knowledge mining. We're data everywhere. 
and uh, with the disparate sources of data, how, do, how can we leverage gen generative AI to provide insights to the users? Uh, documentation, a um, lot of contracts and a uh, lot of regulatory uh, documents that come into play. We need to extract information, like certain trading terms, for example, out of a ISDA document. There can be thousands of those documents that was done usually manually and our traders didn't have access to that. So if a trader is exceeding trading limits without knowing what the trading limits are, uh, they would be um, violating some of the uh, regulatory requirements. So we built a generative AI solutions to extract information that is specific to uh, that particular uh, product line um, uh, trading and feed it back to the traders automatically. Uh, we do, I'm calling it legacy AI ML, but it is the classic AI ML, uh, predictive analytics, uh, anomaly detection, et cetera. Uh, we are incorporating that into most of our business processes. Um, so anomaly detection definitely comes into that. Examples of that could be uh, pricing errors or you have incorrect margin calls that go out occasionally. So we should be able to highlight those before they go out to that. So that's a, a business function. Um, the other um, areas where we have uh, accelerated our adoption of generative AI is in uh, developer productivity. So, as you can see, we're going th across the board. Now, many of the uh, technologies in play, um, they don't always um, end up being AWS, but vast majority of our technology stack, uh, AWS being our um, um, primary partner uh, in uh, cloud service and as well as in the AI space, we're using majority of their products in, in developing these solutions. <clears throat> so I'll go and uh, talk about those two specific use cases that uh, we did with HCL and uh, AWS. So just to give a, a little bit of uh, background on what it is that we're trying to achieve here. So who are these people? So we get thousands of emails from a variety of clients, uh, agents, asking for all sorts of different things that are embedded into the email in any, with no structure at all. So it could be, what's the status on my trade? Why is this settlement instruction incorrect? And the emails come into a central mailbox and believe it or not, humans are actually looking at those emails based on their tribal knowledge, they understand the email, they would redirect it to some individual who is the primary coverage person for that particular client. And that you can uh, imagine, it's very manual intensive, not the most satisfying piece of work, and that's why we thought the ROI is going to be uh, the highest in this case, so we picked up the use case. Just to give you a scale about at least 2,000 emails come into that mailbox every day, and uh, people are generally going through, okay, this came from here, this is going where? So that's the problem. Uh, what do they do? They classify the emails. Well, it's a trade status issue, or is it a payment issue? Or So it's a different types of problems that are described in your email and from where it came. So it becomes, and the specific information in the email could come in any form. It could be a pasted picture, attachment, it could be part of the body text. Some people just give a trade ID in the subject. You do not know. Emails are a hard nut to crack, as, as you all know, because they really lack structure. So what we have um, done here is leveraging um, multiple services from AWS stack uh, Comprehend for uh, classification of the email. So we had 11,000 plus rules, which were um, directing these emails beforehand. And the rules were basically outdated in no time because as new clients are onboarded, I mean, new rules have to be created. So what we have done is uh, we trained the models. Um, essentially, we are able to now, with about 90% accuracy, tag the emails based on just the metadata within the emails. Uh, that, so we also had to do some com um, custom connectivity between Outlook on Azure and AWS. That's where all our services is running, so that is all a repeatable process. 
Now, once the email has been classified, we next have to extract some information out of that in order for us to provide the response back to the client. So for example, you have to extract the entities. It could be a trade ID or any other identifier that they may have provided in there. So for that, we use TextRact as well in combination. First, classify, extract information. Now, one of the things that is work in progress is we're going to develop agents for different classifications. Dedicated agents will go out grab the information from wherever it resides in our own ecosystem within the data and uh, bring it back. The final step is we are, um, based on the information received from the agents, we're generating a draft response to the client automatically. Now, I call it draft response because we are a regulated industry and anything client facing will never be straight through processing for us. There's always going to be a human in the loop and that's what they do. So the draft goes into a draft folder, they look at it, information seems accurate, hit send, gone. So as you can imagine, like, you know, over 80% of their workload is now automated through this and there are a few nuances we're dealing with. Obviously it's a um, work in progress and Hopefully, uh, within the next few weeks, we sort those out, and the response can be actually used in production. The other use case, this is, now normally detection is not new, it's, I, it falls into the classic machine learning area. However, why do we have anomalies? That's where it gets interesting. So let's say we have a price anomaly on a given day. That's easy on a time series data. However, if you want to find out and provide, why do you think that is? Was there a market event? Was there a corporate action? Was there a stock split so that the uh, price went down or was there a reverse split? We do not know that information in that time series information. That's where generative AI comes into play for us again. So we are incorporating a lot of public data available, our internal data for associated um, data points, and using our uh, generative AI uh, talk to the data kind of, as I call it, you know, uh, we basically are grabbing all of the information and providing a context on that specific moment in time. Was there an anomaly? And if it was, was there an event that we previously did not know, but now we are able to do that. So basically the system is being built as a framework. So anomalies can be in any time series data. So the way we are basically looking at this is to be able to feed in our data set in a predefined structure format. Uh, we choose the right model for it, and we're leveraging SageMaker on the machine learning side and Bedrock on the generative AI side. Uh, a combination of those use cases and uh, providing the uh, uh, final output. Now, this used to be done completely manually. We have seen about 40x improvement in the amount of time it takes to identify a problem in the first place. It used to be that somewhere some of the downstream process would fail because of that anomaly and then somebody would identify, oh, there was a problem. So now we are proactive and we are basically not reactive, searching why it happened because our generative model is providing the context if there was one. So in the last few minutes, I want to talk about you know, what are the takeaways and our conclusions here. So first of all, why AWS? As I said, AWS is our primary service provider, so it's no brainer uh, going there. But if you look at their services they are offering, and we saw the keynote, it's constantly evolving, enhancing, and providing better services that we feel it makes, as a consumer, our job a lot easier to consume from AWS services for all of our, um, uh, not just on the generative AI side, but even in other uh, aspects of our development life cycles. The second bullet is, in my mind, is very important. Um, Jeffries is an investment bank, and we have a partner ecosystem. Partnership has been um, the most instrumental aspect of the success that I'm talking about. 
HCL Tech brought in the expertise in the data science domain, the generative AI. Jeffries had the domain knowledge, AWS solution architect. All three worked together. And our business users came together as well to defining the problem and identifying where the generative AI solution would benefit best. So I think it's a, for any AI solution in general, if we do not bring in the full partner ecosystem together, I think somewhere or the other, we may build a less than adequate solution. So for me, this was very important. Uh, solution impact. We've realized that you can apply machine learning and AI and generative AI for a lot of things. And I'll give you an example. Let's say there's a small firm that has um, HR policies and you want to create a HR chatbot uh, with 500 people. Chances are the effort that goes into building something like that is same that for perhaps an IBM where the scale is very many. So how many people do end up asking that kind of question in a small enterprise versus a large enterprise? Scale matters, right? Effort is the same. So we had to weigh in the business benefit of where do we have the most uh, impact of the solution we are choosing? So we picked our use cases very carefully and that's where the business comes into play. So that was the uh, other takeaway. Um, now, what we are talking about is foundational solutions. So we didn't look at this as just a one-off use case. So everything that we are uh, building and I talked about is generally uh, being developed as a framework where we can introduce additional agents depending on what the agent needs to do. And email is a pervasive way of communication across the board. We have taken an operations use case. Now we can take in a client outreach, know your client, a KYC, et cetera. So all of these are going to be uh, sort of reusable solutions where we apply them to different use cases and basically get the same benefit without the uh, same amount of effort in there. Uh, we are a regulated industry. So everything we have built, even though we could have automated every one of these solutions front to back, but we're not allowed to, and we don't believe that that generative AI output is 100% accurate all the time, and we're not going to rely on that to make the decisions. So because of that, every solution, wherever there's an output from any of our models, there's a human verifying the output. The feedback loop obviously improves the situation over time, but it also makes our regulators very happy that you know, there is a human in the loop. So th these are some of the takeaways that uh, you know, through the experience of working with HCL and AWS in the last many months that I've uh, figured out that this is really the key and we'll continue to build on this journey. Thank you. Thank you.